Hey folks, welcome back to the Sedgwick Jimmy channel. We're certainly glad to see you, and per a request, thanks to Viral Fox for that, today we're taking a look at the history of pepper, primarily black pepper, that everyday spice that makes up about 20% of the spices traded worldwide today. When did we start using it, where does it come from, and why has it magically become linked to salt? Well, that's what we're here to talk about, so let's get into it. Black pepper, as most people think of it, comes from ground up black peppercorns, which are technically a fruit that come from the black pepper or piper nigrum plant. It's collected while still green and unripe, then typically heated in water and dried, causing the outer skin to shrink and turn black. Also, don't get pepper confused with chili peppers. They're both used to add spiciness, but pepper originated in Asia, whereas chili peppers originated in Mexico. A big difference between pepper and chili peppers is that pepper gets its spiciness from a chemical compound called piperin or piperine, rather than the capsaicin that gives chilies their kick. Pepper is native to southern and southeast Asia as well as some of the Pacific Islands, but its prominence grew due to the Chera dynasty in southern India and their trade along the Malabar coast. Not Malamar, Malabar. Some of you may have heard of the Tamil Kings, a group of three trading kingdoms that nobody could quite conquer, and the money behind the kingdom of Chera was from Pepper. We know it made its way to Egypt by the 1200s BC because Ramses II was mummified with peppercorn stuffed up his nose. And pepper at that point was rather expensive. Even in ancient Greece, it was seen as a spice for the super rich who was sometimes used in place of money, much like its sister seasoning, salt. Pepper would sometimes also even be demanded as part of ransoms, but considering the amount of time and effort it took to ship it in and move it across land routes, the expense was kinda understandable. Pepper was very popular in Rome, to the extent that the recipes of an early cookbook, Apixius, nearly all contain it as a spice. The Romans acted as middlemen, carrying the pepper from India to Rome, where it was sold or sent all throughout the empire. After Rome fell, others had to step up into this role. First the Persians, then the Arabs, and eventually this middle route became controlled by Islam. Once it passed through the Mediterranean, trade was all but monopolized by the Italian merchant cities, primarily Venice and Genoa, who built their wealth off of the pepper trade. It's believed by some that by the Middle Ages, pepper was being used to disguise the taste of spoiled meat, but we have very little evidence to prove this, plus pepper was still relatively expensive and salt was much better at preserving. This by the way is seen by many as the beginning of the partnership between salt and pepper. You salt the meat to keep it from going bad and pepper it to help with the flavor. Plus the, well, saltiness of salt has always mixed well with the spiciness of pepper and you have a match made in heaven. By the late 1400s, the high prices of spices, yeah, that rhymed, but my poet didn't know it, particularly pepper, led the Portuguese to decide they wanted to find their own route to India in order to cut out the pricey middlemen. And once Vasco da Gama sailed around Africa and reached India by boat, it was off to the races. They were unable to monopolize the spice trade, seeing as so much was still being brought in through the same old channels, and eventually their routes were overtaken by the English and Dutch. Mostly the Dutch, seeing as the Dutch East India Company all but controlled the maritime spice trade. And it was this lack of trade routes that led the English and French to search for another way, maybe through that new world across the ocean, and they stepped up their explorations, not finding much as far as spice routes were concerned, but finding plenty of other resources as they expanded into North America. But the good news was that the more pepper that came in, the lower the price went, and its use increased. It continued its popularity into the modern day, where we see it in shakers on nearly every dining table. By the way, fun fact, the largest supplier of pepper today is Vietnam, who is responsible for about 35% of the world's pepper exports. Believe it or not, there are six variations of the peppercorn, and therefore six versions of pepper. Two black versions from different locations, as well as two white for the same reason. 
White pepper is simply black pepper, but the outer skin is removed. Green pepper is the same unriped peppercorn, but it's pickled, and red pepper is from ripe peppercorns that are sometimes pickled. Each has a different flavor and use, as well as differing parts of the world that find different ones more palatable. Plus, it's much more difficult to ship fresh or unpreserved peppercorns to other parts of the world, hence why they tend to be more common in Asian cuisine, which is local, rather than the dried pepper commonly used in much of the rest of the world. And that's just gonna about do it for our quick look at the spicy route pepper took to get to our dinner tables. And if you liked it, why don't you give us a like? If you want to see more, give us a subscribe. If you have anything to add or any ideas for future episodes, head on down to the comments and let us know. We appreciate you watching and hope to see you here again on Sedgwick Jimmy for more videos in the future. Come check it out.